Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. All of us have dreams of grandeur at one time or another in our lives, and it happens particularly when we're young folks. Some call it hero worship, some call it daydreaming, but call it what you may, we all do it at one time or another. Some dream they're going to be a great preacher or a great doctor. Others dream they might be a great general or statesman. Still others dream of being famous missionaries or teachers. In other words, we dream of being famous. Then as life goes along, we realize that we can't all be chiefs. Most of us have to be Indians. But it's because of our dreaming that we sometimes become problems. And that's what we're going to contend with in our story today. I like to call it The Road to Fame. Carol, here's a complaint about young Todd Dahlgren again. Now what's he up to this time? Uh, he's hunting on the foster land where no hunting's allowed, and the place is posted, too. That young man's going to be the death of this sheriff yet. What's the matter with him? Hey, that's a good question, Carol. I think he needs the seat of his britches dusted with a plank. Oh. Too late for that now. His father should have done it ten years ago. You'd better go out and pick him up, Pat. And this time, throw him in a cell. I'm tired of giving him another chance. Okay, I'll be on my way. <laughs> I've got five lads of my own, and the five of them put together haven't caused as much grief as this fella has. But you've taught them to respect law and order. And you've tanned the back of their laps when they've gotten far out of line. You'd better get going before there's real trouble. Hey, we've got enough of this as it is. <laughs> All right there, young fella. Pat O'Rourke. Sure it's me. I'm not a ghost. Break that shotgun and pick up your birds and come along. You're under arrest. Under arrest for what? Don't try any of your fancy lying on me, young man. I hate liars, and I'll give you the back of me hand if you try it on me. Okay, okay, so I'm hunting on private and posted property. So what? I'm not the judge and jury. Now break that gun and come along. <laughs> What's the charge, Sheriff? Trespassing on private property, the use of firearms on private property, hunting on private property. I think the judge will take a pretty dim view of this, especially since the foster place is well posted with no hunting and no trespassing signs. Hello, Dad. <laughs> nice day, isn't it? You young whelp, when are you going to stop this sort of thing and become a man? Why, Pop, you surprise me. I'm making the world sit up and take notice. You have a pretty famous son, you know. I'll say you're famous. Mention your name to a police officer or a sheriff deputy and he turns blue in the face with rage. <laughs> so what? I haven't done anything really wrong. I'm not a criminal, I just have lots of fun. Please, son, stop this nonsense and make something of yourself before it's too late. Another lecture, Dad? <laughs> Look, pay the bail and let's get out of here. Huh? I'm not going to pay the bail this time. Well, why not? It's only $25. You're rich. What's 25 skins to you? Cal, I'm ready to leave. Okay, Doc. Be right there. Oh, now, Dad, you're not going to let me stay here in jail. It looks like that's just what'll happen if I don't pay the bail. Oh, now, Dad, you wouldn't leave your own son in jail, would you? Stop and reconsider. That's what I want you to do. Stop and think of what you're doing. You'll only be in here for two days and nights, Todd. Then you'll come up for trial. Two days and nights? Two days and nights? Dad! Dad, I promise not to get in any more trouble if you'll change your mind. 
I've heard that before. I wish I could believe it. I mean it this time, Dad. Honest. Okay. Let him out, Cal. I'll pay the bail. Are you sure you're doing the right thing? Won't hurt him to stay here a while. It'll give him a time to think it over. I know it would. But I'm going to give him one last chance. Thanks for falling for my act, Dad. Act? What do you mean, act? Oh, you know what I said isn't like me. I want to get a name, and this is the way I'm going to do it. You really mean that, don't you? I sure do. I want to become famous. Why don't you try for it the way others do? That's too much work. I'd rather do it this way. It's faster and easier. (laughs) Don't worry, I won't get into, into any serious trouble. Now you listen to me, Todd. I'm not through yet. You're too big to be whipped, which is just what I should have done a long time ago. This is just as much my fault as it is yours, and perhaps more so. But I'm not through yet. Uh, What are you going to do? Never you mind. You just go along the way you've been going, and you'll find out what I'm going to do. This is no idle threat. In fact, I'm going to do this right now. I'll see you at home this evening. Goodbye. Uh, Dad, wait. It's too late for that now. Doc, how are things? Uh, not so good, Bill. Well, what's the matter? Not enough people brushing their teeth these days and they're killing you with work? <laughs> no, it's it's personal. Have you got an hour or so to listen? I sure have. Always got time to listen to a person's troubles. Okay, let's hear it. It's Todd. Hmm? Again? Now, there's no again with him. It's always Todd. Well, what did he get himself into this time? Hunting on a foster place. Mm hmm. Mel Foster gets pretty angry about anyone ignoring his posted signs. I don't blame him. Well, the short of it is that Todd's out on bail now, and he thinks it's a big joke. Mm hmm. Bill, what's the matter with the boy? Oh, I know. Maybe I was too busy pulling teeth when I should have been giving Todd the love and attention he craved. And I also admit. I've been pretty short in his spiritual training. Looks as if that's it, all right. But the horse is out of the barn now, and and I want to get him back in and lock the door. That's a pretty big order, my friend. It's a pretty hard thing to undo 20 years of habits and thinking. I know. Bill, I'll come right out and say what I'm thinking. I feel that the lad needs psychiatric help. I think this obsession of his to become famous has warped his mind. Oh, I don't know, Doc. I don't think he's gone that far yet. But this trouble he gets into, he calls that fun-making. Bill, you know that's not normal. No, it isn't. But Todd thinks it is, because then he gets the attention he craves. The main thing, I'm afraid, is that Todd doesn't have any standards of right and wrong. Actually, all the fun-making he does when he hurts others is wrong. It's sin. That's what God calls it. Once a man gets that concept, he's on the road, I think, to realigning himself with others, and especially with God. In the meantime, he gets attention all right, but it only seems to deaden any appreciation of moral responsibility. I understand that now, but isn't there some way he can be helped? Yes. Yes, there is. Can you help him? I don't know if I can. Can or not, Doc. I'm not trained at that sort of thing. Nonsense. It's born right in you. Besides, you have a Christian understanding and love of people. I've seen you work wonders with folks who need mental and spiritual help. Yes, I have helped some. But those folks wanted to help themselves for the most part. Now, let me think it over for a day or two and see what I can come up with. Thank you, Bill. Thank you very much. It's strange that I should be asking you to do the job I should have done ten years ago. (laughs) 
I'll get it, Louise. Morning, Doc. Oh, good morning, Steve. What's this? It looks like Uncle Sam's calling time. It's from the draft board. You don't say. Hmm. Thanks. You're welcome. Good day. Good day. Todd. Yeah, Dad. Mail for you. Oh, what is it? It's from your uncle. My uncle? Yes, your uncle Sam. My uncle... Trumpet catfish it is from Uncle Sam. I'm in the army. So, it looks like the problem's out of our hands, Bill. At least for the time being. Yeah, it would appear that way, Doc. How about his trial? Well, the judge waived it because Todd's going into the army. Mm. I guess he figures Todd's being drafted will remove him as a menace to the community. <laughs> you may have hit on the truth. And I believe that the judge feels a tour of duty in the army will be good for Todd. And I think it will, too. Do you really? Yes, definitely. Why? Well, for one thing, he'll get discipline like he's never had it before. And his fellow recruits will see to it that he falls in line. Because if he doesn't, the whole outfit will suffer. You'll see there are some basis, some basic standards to be observed, Doc. I really think that this is going to be a good thing for Todd. Dahlgren, why can't you march like a human being? You walk like a banty rooster, up and down, up and down. This isn't a boxing match. This is a close-order drill. Now keep your feet on the ground and stop bobbing your head. Why don't you go soak your head in a bucket of cement? Do you mean that? You bet I mean it. Nobody tells me I'm awkward. I'm telling you you're awkward because you are. And for mouthing off, you get 20 hours extra police duty. 20 hours? You're crazy. It's just gone up to 40 hours. Open your mouth once more and it'll be the guardhouse for you, smart guy. I'm going to do more than open my mouth. Try this for size. Is that all the harder you can hit, Dahlgren? Why, you knucklehead. Corporal! Put this man under arrest. Private Dahlgren reporting for duty, sir. Uh, sit down, Dahlgren. Thank you, sir. Young man, you've racked up a disgusting record during your short tour of duty in the Army. You refuse to cooperate and work as a team with the men in your platoon and company. You're insolent to non-commissioned officers, and you've topped that off by striking Sergeant Franklin. What's the matter with you, soldier? You unhappy with the Army? Well... I understand your mouth worked fine when you were talking back to your sergeant. Oh, I, I don't know. I, I just don't like being pushed around. Never did. That's, I didn't like it even before I got drafted. Well, this is the army, son. We're not concerned with what you did in civilian life, particularly. What we're extremely interested in is how you're doing in the army. Now, even though I'm your commanding officer, and uh, most of the time exacting obedience is required... I like to talk to my men one at a time and let them have their say off the record. It's good for all concerned. Well, now's your time to talk off the record. Well, uh, Major, I, I don't know what's wrong between the Army and me. Well, maybe it's just the fact that I've always tried to be a rugged individualist. I've done things that nobody else dared to do. Mm, I see then you uh, haven't any real complaint about army life? No, sir. Not as such. Oh. All right, Dahlgren. We'll let it go at that for now, but um, I'm not satisfied with your remarks. If you decide you'd like to talk some more, request permission to see me. In the meantime, you'll have to return to the guardhouse until you're court-martial. That's all for now. Yes, sir. Swanson? Yes, Major? Uh, bring your shorthand pad. I want to dictate a letter to that young man's father.
Bill, just a minute. Okay, Doc. I'm glad I caught you. What's up? I've got a letter here from Todd's commanding officer. Oh? The Army hasn't changed it. Todd's in trouble again, and this time he's going to be court-martialed. What did he do? Socked a sergeant. Oh, that's not good, believe me. I figured as much. But the commanding officer's taken a personal interest in Todd, and he's asking me to come and see him and have a talk. Mm, That's fine. I'd do it by all means. I intend to. Only I was wondering if... um, Well, I don't want you to think I'm a coward, but I was wondering Uh, if... uh, If I'd go with you? Yes, yes. (laughs) Thanks for saying it. Bill, will you please? Sure, I'd be glad to, Doc. I really appreciate this, Bill. I value your friendship and help with this problem more than anyone I can think of outside the Lord himself. Gentlemen, this is Chaplain Swain. How do you do, Chaplain? It's our pleasure, sir. Mr. Dalton, Mr. Jefferson, I'm pleased to meet you. Thank you. Well, gentlemen, shall we start our conversation of Private Dalton? Yes, by all means. Gentlemen, the, the charges against the soldier in question are very serious. And I think, or I should say I hope, we can accomplish more than prescribing punishment for him. Record as it stands, and I'll admit that up to this point, we, uh, the army, haven't accomplished much to build this young man. However, we haven't given up. Fact is, we're just planning our first attempt to change Todd Dahlgren into a responsible soldier and citizen. I hope for all our benefit that it works. I surely haven't been able to handle him. On the other hand, I realize now that I was too busy with my profession and failed to give him the attention and and understanding and love that he needed in his young and formative years. I'm not proud of the failure, and that's why I'm here. Because he's still my son, and I love him. And I want desperately to try and repair the damage I caused to his life. We appreciate and commend your honesty, Dr. Dorgan. It isn't every father that would make such an admission. We've made a lot of progress already because we know you will cooperate. Yes, indeed, Chaplain. Uh, Mr. Jefferson, uh, what's your opinion of this problem? Don't be afraid to speak your mind, Bill. I won't be offended. What I have to say won't offend you, Doc. Gentlemen, I'm wondering if we might not approach this thing from another angle. Well, continue, sir. What do you mean? Up until now, Todd's always been punished for being a rugged individualist. Everyone he's run up against has negated his actions and condemned him as a roughneck and a ne'er-do-well. Sometimes justly, because he's been wrong. Sometimes unjustly, when only his individualism has shown up. Todd's reaction to men's condemnation has been negative, too. Subsequently, he's gotten into a lot of trouble, because that was his only way of gaining recognition. Hmm. I shouldn't wonder, but that you're right. I think he's hit the nail on the head. Yes, definitely. And I can see that now. Go on, Bill. I recommend, first of all, that Todd have regular counseling sessions with you, Chaplain. And then, suppose he is a natural-born leader of men. Wouldn't a show of faith on our parts bring an expression of responsibility out of him and also a better reaction from the young men? I only suggest this as one of the answers. I wonder if that would work. Mr. Jefferson, I'm going to delay the court-martial and give this boy a chance to react under different treatment. That's excellent, Major. Well, thank you, gentlemen. I really didn't do anything except to give an opinion of the problem as I see it. Well, Chaplain, your job is to spend time with this young man. And Dr. Dahlgren, I'm going to put him out in front in everything. I'm going to push responsibility on him by the pound. Give him all he can take. I've tried this before on some men, perhaps in a little milder form, so maybe it will work this time. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for coming to talk with us. We deeply appreciate your interest and help. (laughs) 
Private Dolgan, I'm setting aside your court-martial for the time being. This doesn't uh, minimize the seriousness of your offense, nor does it guarantee there won't be a future court-martial, understand? Yes, sir, I understand. Now, I've arranged a series of counseling sessions with the chaplain. Yes, sir. And I'm sending you to non-com school. Non-com school, sir? Yes. Something uh, wrong with that soldier? No, no, sir. Well, there's nothing wrong with it at all. Not at all. I I'm honored, sir. Oh, I'm glad you are. Uh, remember one thing, Private Aldrin. Yes, sir? I'm sticking my neck out a country mile for you. If my neck gets even one tiny nick because of your inability to justify my faith in you... Well, I'm not a man of threats, but um, you get the point, I'm sure. Yes, sir. I'll not fail your faith in me, sir. Matter of promise? It is, sir. You made promises before and failed to keep them. Well, it was because of the fact that there wasn't any incentive, sir. Who's the non-com in charge of this barracks? I am, sir. What about this paper? These cigarette butts under the footlocker. And the latrine isn't cleaned up. Sir, I put a man on the job. No excuses. Put these men on the ball. It's your responsibility to see that these barracks are kept clean. Haskins? Oh, Haskins! Yeah. What's a big idea sitting up here in the game room? You've got a job to do to get these barracks clean. I got tired. <laughs> tired? Well, the captain just jumped all over me. Get down and swing that mop around. I did. What do you mean? The latrine needs cleaning and there's paper down at the front end of the barracks. Yeah, somebody must have come along after I finished. You know very well you haven't touched it. Don't you tell me what I haven't done. You heard me. I'm getting tired of your gum beating. Go on now, we want to finish this game. Haskins, get down there. I've had enough of you. Oh, that guy's got a stiff left. Yeah, but wait till I get a hold of the captain and report this. You gonna report him? He hasn't got any right to lambast me like that. I had my orders. What do you mean, he hasn't got any right? Well, he was wrong. I had my orders and I had to pass them on. Seems to me I heard that something like this happened to you once before. <laughs> What's the matter with your men, Dahlgren? They couldn't hit the side of a mountain with a plank. Yes, sir, I noticed that, Captain. Well, just don't stand there with your mouth open. Do something before the enemy breaks through your right flank. Yes, sir, right away. Keep your head down or you won't have it very long. Hey, what's the matter with you guys? Zero in on the plank and keep them from breaking through. If you're having trouble with the range finder, it, Ty. It's crazier than a bed bug. Now, let me see it. It's broken. All right, I'll call the range. Uh, 1,500 yards. Range, 1,500. Fire. You hit it. Right on the butt. Cease fire. Cease fire. Now well, there's the blue flag. We knocked out the enemy. Sorry we let you down, Todd. Captain, rough you up? A little. Dahlgren? Yes, Captain. Well, that was fine shooting. Only you've got to think faster and act faster when your men and equipment let you down. Get that? Dalton, I'm pleased with your progress at non-com school. Oh, thank you, sir. We're going on full-scale maneuvers in the morning. You'll command A Company. Me, sir? I mean, yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, yeah, soldier, you'll find that you'll have to buy leadership with a high price. It'll cost you dearly. You don't understand that now, but uh, I'm sure you will after maneuvers. That's all. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, one more thing. Yes, sir. Keep up the good work. <laughs> Bruce? Yes, Todd? As soon as the barrage begins to lift, we'll move out. Okay. Pass the word to the platoon commanders. Yeah, we should be able to take them by surprise. 
Bancroft, get a hold of fire control. Tell him to cease fire and send medical help. Motor shells, pulp, George. Over here with the stretcher. Olson, get the doctor for this man on the double. Yes, sir. Here, soldier, let me help you with that bandage. Thank you. Todd, there's a dead mortar shell over by that big tree. There is. Look, clear the area. Make sure all the wounded are out. On the double. I hear you have a dog over there, soldier. Yes, Major. There, there is, and I'm going in after it. Why, you? You might be killed. Or send some of your men. No, sir. Is that an order, sir? <laughs> it is not. Why? Well, I feel it my responsibility, sir, to get that dud. I'm in charge of this sector, and, well, it's my baby. But if it uh, blows in your face... Well, then, no, I tried. <laughs> Good boy, let's go. You, sir? I'm in command here, soldier. Easy does it. Yes, sir. I'm ready to lift it up now. Do it carefully. After you get it up, I'll disarm it. Ready, sir? Yeah. C- careful now. Lift it just as careful as you would a newborn baby. I've got a good hold of it. If you take two good turns, we'll we'll live to tell a story. Here goes. Yes, sir. Here goes the first turn, soldier. Uh, made it. One more and we'll live to be old men. Here goes. Uh, uh, we've made it. Don't move yet until I get the detonator all the way out. This one you can tell your grandchildren, Sergeant Dahlgren. Dad, Bill, thanks for coming to visit me. I'm proud of those stripes, son. The Major wrote me a letter telling me how you earned them at the risk of your own life. We're all proud of you, Todd. Very proud. How does it feel to be a leader and shoulder responsibility? Well, it's kind of rough at times, but I like it. Todd, why'd you pass up the Major's offer to send you to officer school? Well, because I want to start from the bottom. Learn all there is to learn about leading men. The road to fame is a costly road, Todd. All famous people have paid a dear price to reach this top. But then, anything worthwhile is worth paying for. Well, see you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill! 